Hey everyone, this is Sumi with the Container Garden Update for May 26. Let me pan the camera real slowly so you can see what's growing in our Container Garden. Looks like my daughter is pretty excited to see a bee. It's always good to see bees in the garden. Here's our bee friend. Always plant flowers to attract bees. <laughs> See how nice these okra plants are? That's because I direct seeded all of these plants. Always direct seed okra because if you don't, that's what happens on the lower left bottom corner. You can see how small that plant is compared to the others. That's the result of transplanting. Over here is all of our vining plants. As you can see, uh, there's a few cucumbers on here. Over here is a bitter melon plant. I have something cool to show you. Here is our first bitter melon of the season. Did you know that bitter melon has cancer fighting properties? We got some cucumbers over here. We're harvesting our cucumber. <laughs> That's a pretty good size for our first one. Very cool. And what we do is we remove the, the oh, kind of like the thorns spikes. or yeah spikes. We just rub it like that. Very cool. There you go. This is a suyu long cucumber. All right. I underestimated the size of these sunflower plants and uh, here is our kabuka squash plant and right next to it uh, we have some spaghetti squash and uh, I wanted to show you something cool that you might be able to use in your garden and uh, that's the use of bottomless pots basically there's no bottom to this pot and uh, the whole point to using bottomless pots is to make your plants a little stronger uh, as you know tomatoes will grow roots along the stem so what I did was I put the bottomless pot filled some soil kept it a little wet so to encourage more roots and this will help older plants that are starting to slow down start to pick up again. We're getting ready to harvest some kaboka squash because uh, we have about two, three on the vine right now. Today we're, look, the right there, look. Okay, hold it. Look, go, 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 look at, okay. go, go, hold the squash. You want to hold the squash? Yeah, look at that. Okay, put your squash in your container, darling. This one too? Yeah, just do that one also. Look at that. A big squash. Yeah, kaboka squash. Oh, daddy. Wow, that's a bigger one. Show, show. Yeah, you can show? Show. Nice. Go put it inside. There you go. Here are some more bottomless pots. Look at all the tomatoes there. Here's a zucchini plant growing in a five gallon pot. It looks like I have some powdery mildew that I need to take care of pretty soon. Here's some zucchini that are pollinated and starting to grow. Here's our zucchini plant growing in an 18 gallon container. As you can see, uh, this is a little bit of an older plant. And uh, you gotta check out the size of this zucchini. It's almost two feet long right already. 
We're trying to grow uh, corn from seed in containers and uh, we're not sure how it's going to turn out but it will be nice to see how it does. Here's our update on our trash can uh, eggplants and peppers and uh, the peppers have already started producing. Uh, the eggplants has a lot of flowers so I'm sure we'll get to see them pretty soon. Alright, go ahead mommy. Wait, we need to... Um, what are you making? I'm uh, gonna make an in Indian menu right now. Well, what is For it? Shrimp and also uh, the chickpeas. The chickpeas. So we need some peppers. So we're already uh, harvesting early. There you go. Uh, can I see that pepper, mom? Hey, Josh. Can you? What does this look like? I think this is the the Filipino Portia Portia F1 hybrid. Uh, if you know what it is, if this looks familiar to you, let us know what it is. No more. Okay. Here. Okay, Gianna and Leah are harvest. Is there a lot of peppers in there? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, look at that. Oh. Some peppers right there. Okay. There's more. You want any more? Or okay. Leah needs some Malabar spinach for one of her dishes. So we're harvesting. Those are nice leaves. Yeah. They're so delicious. So we're growing them over here. Nice. It will start to vine up. Oh, this trellis was made by Leah too. Uh, she was pretty creative in, in putting this together. If you haven't grown this, you should because it's a, a great substitute for uh, spinach when you don't have your, your cold spinach or uh, the cold crop spinach. Because this will grow throughout the summer. It likes heat. Yeah. We... moved our messy compost pile that we had over here to over here and uh, now it's much more organized and now uh, this is where we're putting all our greens and whatever waste we have from the garden here's some onions we grew from seed that we did not want to throw away so what I did was I planted them in these containers here are some full-grown onions uh, that we're hoping to harvest pretty soon. So we had some leftover onions that uh, we did not have any containers for. So we planted it in the container that had the cauliflower before. Here's an update on the dual vine tomato plant. The purpose of doing this is to increase production. As you can see, there is two tomato flower clusters on both stems. One over there, and one over here. It looks like I'll have to grow some new Swiss chard plants because we'll be needing all the leaves and uh, there's not many leaves left here. They're delicious though. The roses are finally blooming. Here is a uh, MHP Gardener's pepper plant over here. Some tomatoes. Over here we have cantaloupe that's growing in the same raised bed. And we have cantaloupes, a lot of little baby cantaloupes over here. We're using the cloth to keep the cantaloupes protected from the ground and uh, from rotting. There's another cantaloupe over there that we have to uh, put some cloth underneath. There's a, oh, there's another one right over here. 
Here are the watermelon and cantaloupe plants growing in the trash can. What I really want to compare is how well these cantaloupe and watermelon do compared to the plants that are growing in the raised bed. Check out all our banana plants growing in this container. Pretty soon we'll uh, probably have to separate a few and transplant them. But all of them are doing really nice. Even the one that we cut back is starting to regrow back. We're trying to maximize our growing space by even using areas that are shaded. Can you imagine we're still growing cabbage in zone 9? Over here we're growing some snake board, some cucumbers, here's a beet plant, right next to it is a opal that we're trellising up this trellis over here. testing this area to see how tomatoes grow in the shade. We do have tomato settings and some pretty nice looking tomatoes as well. There's some tomatoes hiding underneath these leaves over here. Oh sorry, uh, the leaf is in the way. I plan on grafting these tomatoes for the fall garden because I really like them. You, you see one? The container tomatoes growing in the 18 gallon uh, totes are doing pretty nicely. That's a tomato setting. Uh, as you can see I'm using some of the bottomless pots to help the plants uh, grow more roots along the stem. Here's some more tomatoes on the other side. Some of them are really nice uh, big tomatoes at the bottom presses. Most of my tomatoes are hiding underneath the foliage, which is a good thing because uh, it can get pretty hot over here and I don't want the tomatoes to have sun scald. Here are some really nice tomatoes that are hiding under the foliage as well. Here are some tomatoes I'm growing in 5 gallon buckets. I have a few of them growing. And uh, they are also setting right now. Here's the old broccoli bed that we replaced with eggplants that we start from seed and as you can see they're much uh, larger now. In one of my last videos I called this a pink oxard and uh, I think I mislabeled it. So if anyone knows what tomato variety this is, uh, drop me a comment. I don't prune my pepper plants and uh, as you can see they're still very bushy and very healthy looking so I'm pretty happy how they turned out. Over here are the pepper plants that were uh, attacked by aphids and uh, they're recovering really nicely. Uh, I used uh, ladybugs to uh, get rid of the aphid problem I had. This picture over here shows a method of grafting that's never been done before. Basically what I do is I harvest a sucker uh, for the rootstock from a mature plant 
which has no roots at the time of grafting. The scion also is harvested from a sucker of a desired plant that you want to grow and is attached to the rootstock. Once I have grafted the desired scion onto the rootstock, I will reroot it in diatomite, which is a soilless medium, and treat it like a tomato clone. Over here in this picture are suckers from tomato varieties that I really like in my garden. Basically what I'm doing is I'm rerooting them so I could grow them and then harvest uh, the scions from these plants so I could make grafted versions of my favorite varieties. Here is a Kumado plant that I grew back in 2008 in my balcony garden. And I was so impressed by its vigor that I'm uh, tempted to try this as a rootstock on my grass. In this picture over here, what I'm doing is I'm growing my rootstocks from seed. I'm not growing a whole bunch of plants because I don't need them with no roots grafting. I'll be treating these seedlings like regular tomato plants and I'll grow them in 5 gallon buckets. As they put out suckers, I will be harvesting the suckers for my no roots grafting. Here is a no roots graft that has actually healed and has some new roots. The benefit of this method is that you don't have to buy very expensive uh, professional uh, grafting seeds. You could have like a few seeds, grow the plant to full maturity and then harvest the rootstocks. In this picture over here, just for fun, I wanted to grow some uh, no roots grafts in a trash can because I had so much good success with growing peppers and eggplants in the trash can, including watermelons and cantaloupe. Here's another successful experiment that I did. Uh, basically, this is also a new roots graft, but it's not top grafting, it's a side graft. And uh, what I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to see how the roots were formed in water. And as you can see, there's a little bit of roots and the graft has healed. I did this graft on May 9th and it took about 15 days to heal. Here's a close up of the side graft. Um, as you can see, the root stock has been buried under the diatomite to allow it to grow new roots. Uh, but you can see also even on the side graft, uh, part of the scion uh, that's even though it was severely detached from the scion itself, it still grew roots. Here's another uh, no roots grafting experiment that I'm doing. Basically, what I'm trying to do is increase my success rate. And by in this experiment, what I'm doing is um, most of the time when you're doing top grafting, the, t the top of the scion starts to wilt because it's uh, stressed during the healing process. So what I did was I took the main leader off, allowing only one branch uh, to, to help the scion recover. So my goal over here is to force the scion to grow, regrow a new uh, sucker at the leaf node. What's really nice about this experiment is as soon as a sucker starts to grow from the leaf node, I know that the scion has recovered. Once that happens, I can harden off the plant.